Okay, so here's this kind of a terrace stack, uh, plateau, mountain formation. Uh, we're going to put some vegetation and we're going to put some uh, primer on, tissue paper on it. We're going to glue it together and it's all going to come to life. Every step we take forward, we'll really start bringing this to life and it, it'll be a cool little creation. It just kind of morphs into something um, this dynamic. And every time I move it, you see, I had it perfectly set up. And until I get it glued down, every time I move it, new holes and gaps open up. I'll align it as I glue it. You'll see that in the next uh, the next video. But overall, um, my setbacks, my plateaus, my flats, my plane changes, uh, I may clean them up just a little, but overall I'm very, very happy with the way they look. Um, the overhangs, the setbacks. As we put our tissue paper on and get it to set, and we bring more rock formation and more landscape formation in with the tissue paper, and then we put the hardener on. The hardener will cover a lot of flaws. And anything that doesn't look perfect, we can pull it out with, with the hardener. Um, you know, my dad always used to say, paint covers a multitude of sins. And as we paint the hardener and the shell on, it, it'll do the same thing. So um, just a quick thing or two to discuss of why I did the, the tunnel build the way I did it. Uh, number one is simplicity. There's more than one way to skin a cat, more than one way to build a tunnel or a scenery. Um, we didn't have to, arch, to angle back. But that's the way I chose to do it. I think that was reasonable and sensible. Um, we could have literally just went straight up and down and carved one piece of foam, maybe a little thicker piece of foam, uh, carved it back and forth with some uh, dynamics and boulders. There are boulder faces and rock cut formations we can pour in plaster molds attached to this and accent as we go along in our, our landscape construction. Um, and then, as you saw that I stacked the styrofoam together, turned it upside down, traced it, and cut it. Uh, this wire cutter is a hobby cutter and it's a wonderful tool. However, if once this is all glued together, this, this wire filament does not like to cut through glue. It has a very hard time cutting through glue and it's, it's a real task for it. And you break a lot of filament wires when you cut through the glue. So I like to put all the formation in, uh, get it where I want it, and then glue it together. Um, we can come by with a rasp or a file or something like that, you know, and just shape it gently. A wire brush if we had to. We don't want to just destroy our foam. But uh, the next step is we're going to take this apart. And then we're going to um, put it back together with glue. So as I take the tunnel apart, I'm going to number this, okay? And we are in layers. Remember, one, two, three, four, and five. We have the front end and we have the back end. So as you take this apart, when you go to gluing and you've got glue dripping and running and it gets very really slickery, you want to make sure that you can, can move quickly and that you know your, your pattern. You don't want to be figuring out how to reassemble your tunnel while glue is dripping and drying. Um, this is not that complicated, but you'll see my method. And then I'll show you other tunnel projects and other mountain projects when you have uh, 60 or 70 sheets of styrofoam put together and, and you've got to get it back in the sequence and you've got to do it very quickly. So again, one at the bottom, five at the top. I'm going to number my lay my styrofoam this will be number five we know five is the top and i'm going to label f for front b for back again looking at the tunnel the back is at me and the front is forward of me and now i can set this aside my next layer naturally will be four okay and i actually have that backwards don't i because i already labeled that front and back so i'm going to change that to an f i like that better and this is going to be my back and this is going to be number four all right now, I've got a right side, the way I'm looking at it, and a left side. So this is going to be number three, right, and number three, left. Number two, left, L for left, and number two, right, R for right. Okay, number one left number one right okay tunnel portals this is going to be the back and this one's going to be the face all right i'm going to put arrows to the outside pointing which is the outside of the tunnel portal that way we know our portals are lined up okay so the next step we're going to do is we're going to start to glue this up and it's going to um, reassemble very easily. One R, one L, face and back, little glue, little pin. Two L, two R, see how fast that goes together? And you don't really even have to be thinking about it while your glue is drying. You can just glue and staple and go. I'll show you that in the next film. So, very good.
Now, I have this laid out on my board, which would, you can see the layout on the board. So this would simulate your work area, your substrate on top of your bench top or whatever. Um, if you're building the tunnel to the bench top, you can go ahead and glue it. You may want your tunnel to um, be movable after you're finished. You may just be working on your work table. If you're not gluing it directly in place, get a piece of parchment paper or wax paper and lay it down, especially on your first glue. If not, and your glue runs past your star foam, it will glue your star foam to your board. Now, this process of trying to stack star foam on wax paper absolutely will make a saint start to curse. So just be prepared. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I use Woodland Scenics Foam Tack Glue. It does work very well on foam. On the first layer, yes, I've used it. It's good stuff. On the first layer, I'm just going to reach out and grab the ends. Okay. And that's on my left. Let me check out what I've done. Yes, that's one left. And this should be one right. That's correct. Woo! Thought I got ahead of myself. Y'all stay on me. I'll screw everybody up and then where we'll be. Derailed, right? Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come and I'm going to attach those to my portals. Ta-ta-da! There's the face of the back. And that has to be the face of the front because I cannot see any writing, so that means the writing has to be. All right. Now, um, it's important that you get enough glue to hold, but you don't want so much glue that um, you sink the ship or the budget. And this glue is not exactly cheap. But we want a nice ribbon to go around, and you want to just kind of catch it in several places. Because we really want this to stick. It's a thick glue. Seems like I have a booger in it. Yep. Be like a comedy hour and I'll shoot out all over the table. Too much glue! Too much glue! I know y'all never had days like that. Lord goodness, I've had years like that. I may have to stop and get the booger out of the glue. Okay, I'll be right back. Gotta get the booger out. Okay, I have to admit, this is really good foam glue. It really sticks well. That was quite the booger to get out. But we got it. Oh, what a booger. All right, wow, look at it flow. Look at it flow. That's what we want. We want ease. There it goes. That's what I'm looking for. Okay, almost maybe a little bit too much glue. That's a lot. All right, so... My second layer left and the second layer right. Again, I want to dab. Obviously, it's going to catch on the bottom. I want to dab some in so it catches on the... That's the second layer right. I want to catch on the portals and make sure those are gluing tight with this. Okay. So, that's probably as much as I'm going to glue in this setting. And I'm going to get everything kind of locked into place where that I want it. And actually, um, this Woodland Scenics foam glue tacks up really nice, fairly quick. Um, my experience is it's, it sets up a bit faster, um, actually quite a bit faster than wood glue. It has a shorter working time. Uh, wood glue can still be wet. Uh, it, it works, but it can still be wet in 24 hours. Again, um, when you start getting things in place and figure out where you want it and get everything lined up, Glue is slickery, styrofoam is light, pin it. Use your pins. Make sure that you have plenty of pins. And we have those with all these tools. I believe they don't call them pins. I believe the proper name is <clears throat> foam nails. So get your T-pin foam nails and make sure. Here comes the heat. It's going to set the glue. And then um, we'll be back tomorrow and we'll finish gluing it together. And then the next couple of days, we'll start to put on the tissue paper in the skin and start to make it look like a rock. Hopefully by the end of the week, we're adding paint, dry brush, and then textures, grasses, trees, and making it look like the real thing so we can run our in-scale locomotives inside of our tunnel. Thanks again for watching this portion, and I'll be back in a couple of days to finish up. Okay, good morning, and we're back in our styrofoam. We're going to hope has dried. 
I hope everyone had a good night's sleep while the star foam was gluing up and drying. All right, this is exactly what I was talking about. Uh, why you want to put a piece of parchment paper or wax paper, preferably, underneath your star foam if it's not going to be fixed to your working area or your substrate. It sticks. And wax paper will peel off, so I say, fairly simple, with good results, and minimal destruction to your styrofoam. And trust me, if those glue pieces were stuck to wood, you would have destroyed the styrofoam, or at least used your hot wire tool to get it loose. So um, in case the glue is still wet, I'm gonna continue to build on top of the wax paper so inadvertently any glue that's left will not stick to the plywood with the foam, causing adhesion that causes us heartburn, etc., etc. All right, foam nails, ha <laughs> ha. You can see I have used my foam nails. Um, this little box or uh, ohm, if they're supposed to be F, they're foam nails from Woodland Scenics. They do work, they do hold the foam in place. Um, the glue is very slickery on the foam and the foam nails absolutely pin your project down and they do stick. You can see how well they stick. Very much um, a good investment, very much reusable. So actually, you know, I think I'm just gonna leave a handful out on the table as we get ready to glue forward. All right, so I've got one piece started. Uh, I'm gonna, remember we built from number one at the bottom on our layers and we numbered them one, two, three, four, five. So this should be layer number three. Oh, the glue is still coming out. Nice ribbon. I kinda wanna get that by my edges. Um, I don't want my glue so close to the edges that it squishes out. Because if it squishes out of the edges, we have a cleanup job. And a cleanup job with glue is um, a job. And we're trying to not create more work than we have to have. Okay, I've added glue, excuse me, I've added glue to the outside edges because I want this to make contact with the portal lens. And then that was my three left. This I labeled as three right. It's the third layer on the right side. I have the glue on the base. And I'm also gonna glue up just a little dab to catch the portal openings. You can tell I really use that glue. I'm a believer in making it stick. All right. So we can go down and clean off any excess glue. I've got a little more glue than I meant to have, and that's okay. We'll use it up here on the top. It's too expensive to throw away. Very good. So, um, penny saved, penny earned. Penny saved, penny earned. Okay. Um, I think before I add any more glue, you saw what a mess it can turn out to be. I'm real happy with the way uh, my ends are touching the portals, and that's probably where I'm gonna want them to stick. So. I'm going to use my foam nails and my foam nail gun. Kachook! Did you like that? Here, let's show you that foam nail gun one more time. Kachook! All right. So we nailed the foam nails into the foam, uh, so they're going to they're going to hold the project while we have the slickery glue. Oh, my fingers are big. And put one right there. Oh, I forgot. Kachook! There, the foam nail gun. Totally awesome. We'll catch it right here. These pinholes that were gonna be left in the styrofoam, we'll never ever see them. Uh, actually, I should have pinned my portal first. There you go. And there we are. All right, now let's add another ribbon of glue. And I'm just gonna continue building this with some foam nails, some TLC, a little imagination. Um, Again, we want enough glue that it holds, but not so much that it oozes off the sides. That does create a problem. This again, we had labeled layer four, front and the back. Because this is the point when the glue's drying, you don't want to be, oh gosh, we've got it. So we know which direction it goes. So far, so good. 
I like it. Um, I'm going to catch a little glue. It's a little shorter than I remember. It might have shrunk through the night. So I'm just going to scrape a little glue in on the project. I will not try to clean that glue off of the portals. Yeah, so I said, there's no need for it to just dry out there and go to waste. If a forensics person ever checked my tunnel, my fingerprints will be all in it. There will be no denying who built my tunnel or my landscape. Because I will have glue fingerprints all over it. It's kind of like cake batter, you know. If it doesn't get all over the place, who knows if the cake's going to be any good. All right, one last ribbon of glue. We'll just kind of ease it in there. Mm -hmm. Again, I had labeled that. This is layer five in my face. So I know which direction. Okay, I could probably use this to squit more glue. <coughs> there it is. That's a squit. Have you ever used a squit? That's our terminology here in the shop is a squit. <coughs> That's a squit. All right, a squit of glue. It's something between a little bit and a squirt. Okay. Put them out the top. And the main thing we want to do is here just catch it from sliding with our foam nails. Oh, I forgot. Choo! Okay. Forgot to use the nail gun. Wow. I'm gonna be looking for a new job this time tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And choo! Okay. I'm pretty happy with this piece. Um, and I like the way it looks. I like all the terrain, I like all the cuts. Um, the safety's off the nail gun. Choo! Oh, got another nail right there. And I think that's going to hold it until it dries. I'm real, real happy. I like the different textures. I like the crevices, the veins. So when we go to um, to, to dress this, we'll, we'll start with paint and tissue paper. That'll be in the next episode. And all of a sudden, our veins and our texture will really start coming to life on this project. And um, you'll just, you know, it's just, it just happens. So this is one way to build a tunnel. You know, we could have just took a, a piece of foam and turned it sideways and just cut it and, and um, striated it like this. And it would have worked the same without the spread. But in this case, I really like the spread and I like the effect. Um, it's almost, um, it's just almost iconic. Yeah, right? It's just like something that needs to be in Vegas or on the, on the putt-putt court or a miniature golf court or, or something like that, you know? Um, so, so it's really gonna look great, I think, on the in-scale boards. I like it, I'm happy, let's let it dry. I'm going to give it a full eight hours to dry, and then I will see you in the next episode. We'll start putting on the skin, the tissue paper, and we'll be getting that ready. So until then, get some rest.